Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Rundown. I'm Sunny Galt. I'm a messenger with United Network News, and we are the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. And we talk about the real news, which is welcomed in a time where there's so much misinformation and disinformation out there. People simply don't know what they're saying or they're purposely giving out incorrect information. And it doesn't matter if you're listening or watching the mainstream media or if you think you're on the fringe and (laughs) you found some channels in alternative media, it doesn't matter because most of this is just coming through the same people. It's just different sides of a story, but it's still a story. It's not real. And I think if we check in with ourselves, we realize that the information we're being given is not correct. And so that's why a newscast like ours is so important. Our news updates come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you can catch that at unitednetwork.earth. You do need to be a member to get the news right when it comes out, but if you want to wait a week, then you can catch our news updates on YouTube and Rumble. And honestly, no one's talking about this stuff anyway. So if you get it a week later, it's not like someone's going to scoop us on the information because nobody's talking about this. Nobody has access to the same information that we have access to. What I do in this podcast, though, this is kind of a week in review because our newscast can get kind of long. They can easily be two or three hours long, depending on how long the world situation report is. And that's a lot of time. I know some of you are just waiting for the episodes to come out, which is great. We love you guys. But I understand people have lives, you have families, you have work, you have other things going on. And so we wanted to create a way to round up some of the top stories, but then also give you guys something. So if you wanted to share the news right away, you know, with someone else, you could do that in podcast form. So that's that's what this show is all about. We highlight some of the top stories we cover on the newscast, and that includes our local stories which are told through the eyes of our field messengers, which is you. I'll tell you more about that in just a bit. We have what we call our new earth stories, which is not necessarily where our planet is now, but it's where it's going. How do we prepare humanity for this huge change that is taking place on our planet? Now, if you're new to UNN, you may be like, hey, I feel like we're going to hell in a handbasket here. What are you talking about all this amazing stuff? Stick with us, okay? I know that there is a narrative that's being portrayed right now, but it is a fake narrative told from people that have no idea what they're talking about. They are spewing knowledge instead of wisdom. And we talk about that a lot on our newscast. So if that doesn't ring true with you yet, stick with us. I promise if you come to the news And our updates, with an open mind, this is going to start to settle in. It's going to start to make a lot more sense. So we talk about where our planet is going in the new Earth. It's one of my favorite sections of the newscast because it's so inspiring. We also have stories from different regions on our planet. Okay, So different regions, different continents is usually how we divide things up of what news is impacting you guys now. And we don't care what governments are saying or, you know, non-governmental groups that, you know, were never elected. By the way, none of these people have ever truly been elected. I don't care if it's the president of the United States. They are all selected. They are all puppets. But we have this illusion of having some control when we really don't. But we don't care what those people say because we know they're not in control here. (laughs) And so... The stories that we cover in our regional stories is what's actually going to impact you because what some president or prime minister says about some war that he's not even involved with doesn't matter. It's usually just to cause conflict and to get people arguing. So we don't talk about that stuff. But if there's something, there's a law, you know, there's a, a, a water shortage, there are, you know, your utility bills are going up or a new bill has been passed that's going to impact you specifically. That's what we talk about. And then we have what we call our World Situation Report. Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian comes on and gives us an update that's going to blow your mind. This is stuff that you're not going to hear anywhere else. It is real. And it's probably going to connect a lot of dots for you because we've been told bits and pieces of things, but 
the individual stories never really made sense. You know, we'll go to church or synagogue, you know, or go to a temple or something like that. We'll hear a story and it's like, well, how does that really apply to my own life? Well, there are things that are happening today that brings all of that together in real time. And you are part of the story. You are living in the most fantastic time to be alive and be here on planet Earth. And yes, I know that is a big thing to say, but don't take my word for it. When we give you information, look it up. A lot of this information is online. I know we deal with censorship and things like that, but you can, especially in today's today's world situation report. There's different things, specific places you can look up and get this information for yourself. Think critically. Okay, I do have one announcement before we get to the news, and that is we are still working on getting our Android app approved. You guys, this has been one crazy wild ride, (laughs) and Kim has been doing this. I haven't even been focused on the app at all, but we keep getting rejected, but it doesn't tell us why it's rejecting us. It'll say like broken links or something like that, but Kim has gone through and checked every single link And nothing's broken. So we have submitted this multiple times, and we're kind of in this merry-go-round situation. So send us good thoughts, good vibes, and hopefully that will be dealt with soon. But we are on all of the other apps, but Android is the holdout. So sorry about that. We are working on it, and hopefully that will be complete very soon. All right, today is March 23rd, 2024. Here is the rundown of stories you may have missed this week on UNN. So we kick off our newscast with our field messenger reports, and the field messengers are what UNN is all about. It's about you guys telling your own stories about things that are happening where you live, things that are happening in your backyard, right? We all have cell phones. We know how to hit the little record button, (laughs) and that's all you need to do. Show us what's happening in your community. You give us the news. You know, we say at UNN, you are the news now. Because you don't need somebody else to go on national TV and explain what's happening in your area. You can tell it based on what you see with your own two eyes, right? So in each newscast, we have a couple different field messenger reports. On Monday, our reports, our first one is from Chukwudi Kingsley, and he is in southeast Nigeria for this story. And this is a heartbreaker, guys. Residents are losing their homes and their way of life, their means of living. And what they're saying is the government is taking it away. Now, of course, you're not going to hear this on mainstream media, but the residents say the government's just taking stuff away. There was a uh, local retired, um, Chuck Woody called him a civil servant, so I'm not sure what role he actually had, but he was working for the government. He was making payments into a house which... We showed it uh, in the video. It was much nicer than the other homes in the area. And they just took it away. In fact, they didn't just take it away. They marked it for demolition. And so Chuck Woody is showing us through his video the people and what they're going through. And they are literally protesting. They made their own signs. They've just had it. Our second story on Monday is from Mwanda Michael, and he's from eastern Uganda. And this is a very uplifting story. He went and toured a local school, and I love the name of this school. It's called Bright Future Primary School. And this school provides access, obviously, to education for the people. He interviewed the founder of the school and talked a little bit about why the school was so important and how they were helping the community. On Wednesday, our stories, we start off with Helen in Australia. I love Helen. When Helen starts her field messenger report, she always says, it's Helen reporting with nature. And that's because all of her stories have to do with nature, and they're quite beautiful. This story is about selecting and cultivating seeds. So for those of you who are interested in growing not just a garden, but really thinking about a more sustainable way of life, You really need to think about your seeds, because if you just go to the store and buy seeds, those are not going to be great seeds. Surprise, surprise. What you're really looking for, and this is what Helen explains in her story, are heritage and heirloom seeds. These are seeds that have a long history, 
And you're not just getting them in a package in a store. It's coming from another plant. You know, you can kind of see the history of the plant. It offers more flavor. And the nutritional benefits are far beyond anything you're going to get in the store, which most likely is going to be genetically modified seeds. That's not what you need. So Helen breaks this down for us. She actually shows us a plant that had genetically modified seeds as opposed to other plants that are growing very naturally. Um, and it's it's really eye-opening, right? So we need to know more about our seeds. So thank you, Helen, for that report. And then kind of a story that goes hand-in-hand hand with that on Wednesday is from Kathleen. She's in the United States. She's actually in Tennessee. She talks about propagating plants. Now, propagating is where you cut off parts of the plant, stem cuttings is what they call it, to create new plants. So she shows us how she was able to do that. I know she showed us blackberries. I think there were blueberries and some other plants as well. And, she, you know, she just gets out the pots, you know, snips away and starts to grow another plant. And then she kind of shows you the life cycle of it. On Friday, we had a couple of reports. Jerry from Australia, he takes us to Tamsworth. And in Tamsworth, they have the largest country music festival in Australia. So I don't know if you guys like country music, if you like to get your little boot scooting boogie on, uh, but that was kind of fun to see some of the artists and then, um, you know, just kind of see how the community lights up when this event comes to town. And then finally on Friday, we have another report from Monica. Monica's in Romania. She does an excellent job of historical pieces. And this piece was about Pelesh Castle in Romania. This was the former summer home for the Romanian family. And so she takes us through the property and shows us, you know, what the the castles are like and, you know, the different sections of the property. This particular one is nestled in a beautiful part of the forest. And it's got mountains around it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I know I'm just kind of explaining these stories to you guys. They're very visual pieces, a lot of these. <laughs> so I encourage you to, if you're not already a member where you can just hop on the app and see these stories right away, then again, a week later, these newscasts will come out on YouTube and Rumble, and that's where you can watch these reports. Let's talk about the new earth. And I love this portion of the newscast because the whole point of this is to get you guys excited, to get you motivated, because even though we don't hear it a lot, there are people doing incredible things on this planet already. And those are the type of stories that we try to feature. I also try to bring on people who are committed to getting information out there about some of these changes. So this segment of the news, usually there's an interview and then we have some individual stories. So let's first start by telling you more about the interviews. These are short interviews, about five minutes each. If you're on the app, you can go to the New Earth section and see all the different interviews. So on Monday, I talked with Stephanie Ariel. She is an aromatherapist. She is the owner of Artisan Aromatics. And for those of you who haven't been listening to the news, we are actually coming out with our own essential oils. And we're working with Stephanie to make this happen. So I wanted to interview her and talk to her more about essential oils. What do we need to know? And for me personally, I use essential oils all the time. For me, this started two to three years ago. And one of the things you need to know is how to apply essential oils. A lot of us have heard of diffusers, and I think a lot of people, when they think of essential oils, they think of a diffuser just making the air smell good, which is not what essential oils are, are all about. It's about making you and your body feel better. This is actually medicinal. It can do a lot of different things. It can lighten your mood, and depending on how you apply it, it can also impact your body in various ways. So we talk about that. And one of the things I didn't realize that Stephanie mentions in this interview is that it can actually be added to jewelry. So you can put some essential oils in jewelry and wear it, and it can make connection with your skin that way, which I thought was fantastic. But to hear all the other options, you're going to have to listen to the interview. <laughs> okay, on Wednesday, we had an interview with Kelly Bowker. Kelly is a channel now, before you're like, no, 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 I don't want to go there. That's a little too woo-woo. 
I just want you to empty some of your cup out. You know, if it's if it's full, just empty a little bit out. Okay, I know this is kind of the on the outskirts for some of you as far as thinking is concerned. I saw Kelly do another interview online. If you guys are familiar with Next Level Soul podcast, sometimes I catch some of their episodes. And Kelly was on that show, and I instantly resonated with her. I thought she was fantastic, and I emailed her right away, and I said, will you please come on UNN? So in this segment, Kelly is talking about what a channel is, and perhaps more importantly, what a channel is not, because this is a very real thing. There are fakers out there, and there are people just doing this to, you know, get attention, I don't know, to get people watching them on YouTube or whatever, and then there are legit people that are channeling other beings. And if you have the intention of a light and a pure intention of good, you're not going to attract the wrong beings in this. And Kelly explains her whole process, and it's it's just so interesting because she grew up as a Baptist, and we'll actually talk more about that in future segments. (laughs) But If you can imagine a Baptist now becoming a channel, like this was like a big thing for her and her family. And so she explains this whole process. So that's a really good interview with Kelly just to kind of get into that mindset of what is that like and what does someone experience when they're channeling something else? And then on Friday, I did a segment with Jai Hain. He is a regular on the news. He is a quantum osteopath and frequency specialist. And Jai and I talk about his recommendations of what he calls essential frequency therapies. And these are different ways that you can use frequency to help heal your body. And one of the most simple ways, I'll just give you one of them because you guys probably know this already, is grounding, sometimes called earthing as well. So when it's super easy, doesn't cost any money, you simply take off your shoes, don't care what kind of shoes you got, take off those thick soled shoes, you know, that are nothing but rubber disconnecting you from the earth, take those off and walk barefoot. You are going to pick up the frequency from the planet. It is going to connect with you. It is going to stimulate all of the cells in your body and repair them. This is why walking barefoot on grass feels so good. This is why walking on a sandy beach assuming there's no rocks and pebbles to hurt your feet, feels so good. It's not just about taking your shoes off. It is the connection you are making with the planet, and the planet is rejuvenating you through your feet. I know for some of you this is going to sound crazy. It's very real. Just try it. For our stories, our uplifting stories. Oh, I love these. You guys, we've got some really good ones this week. The first one is about dandelions. You know that thing they told us was a weed that you should never mind the dandelions? You know, they're just weeds. Don't pick them up. Don't have anything to do with them. Like, we're supposed to look down on dandelions. First of all, my favorite color is yellow. So as a kid, and even now, when I see dandelions, I get excited because it is my favorite color. I have never bought into the lie that dandelions are just a weed. So we did a story on this to tell you guys more about the power behind dandelions. Dandelions are a powerhouse of nutritional and medicinal benefits. And they're in bloom right now, which is why we're doing the story, right? They bloom in early spring. Now, that bitter taste, if you actually taste the dandelion, because you can make things with it and drink it and do things like that, it kickstarts the body's detoxification process. The flower part of it, cleanses the body's organs, and then the leafy side of it purifies our blood and our circulation. And not only that, but even if you didn't consume the dandelion in any way, just letting it return back to the earth leaves behind nutrients. It leaves behind vitamins A and B, manganese, iodine, and iron. So it replenishes the earth as well. It's beautiful. I love dandelions. So go get some dandelions and grow them all around your house. (laughs) Don't believe the hype about them just being a weed. All right. Next story is about Matt Weimuller. And I love this story. This is a heartwarming story. He is a teacher in Florida and he is using his disability because he's blind to help students in Florida deeply connect to music. So he's a music teacher. And 
he encourages his students, like this is one of the exercises he does. He turns off all of the lights and he tells his students to play from their heart. I don't know if you guys have done any kind of real research and being able to see in other ways, like being able to see when you're blindfolded, all the cells in your body can actually see. And you can also see through your mind's eye, your third eye. That's a very real thing as well. Most of humanity, we're just focused on our eyes, but there are so many other different ways we can see. And I feel like Matt, at least on some level, understands this because there is something about feeling the music and being able to play even without being able to physically see when the lights are turned out. And it's really about trusting your listening skills, right? And so he totally taps into that. We've got some great video that shows the whole process that he does. And our final story to uplift and inspire you guys is about repair cafes. Now, when it comes to the communities that we live in, I know where I live in Southern California, I'm not all that connected to the people around me. I know my neighbors and our kids play and that kind of stuff. But as far as really knowing my community, that's not really a thing. But it should be, right? We should really know and care about the people. We should care about all people, but especially the people around us so we can support and help one another. Repair cafes are taking it one step further. So these are nonprofit organizations that bring different members of the community together and, hence the name, they get together and they fix things. They repair things. And this is very much, you know, sharing experiences. So, oh, I know how to do this. Let me do this. You know, I know how to fix clocks. Well, I know how to sew. I know how to do, you know, various things. So they come together. These are experienced volunteers and they help. And one of the things we talked about in this story, some people may be like, oh, what is that putting other people out of business, like other different service repair shops? And the answer is no, because the people that go to these repair cafes are not the same people that are probably just going to go to XYZ store and get something fixed. They're probably just going to let it sit there and be broken, (laughs) quite frankly. And so it's not hurting other small business owners or anything like this. What it is doing is getting people together, getting us face to face again to connect with each other, you know, and have these personal experiences, which is vital for humanity. Moving on to our regional stories. In each newscast, we have, oh my goodness, 15 to 20 of these regional stories. So it's really hard to narrow it down for this podcast to share with you guys the top stories. So what I do is I go through and I try to see if there's any themes. And I try to pick out a few themes and then share some of those stories that belong to that theme. So our themes today are, or at least for this week, are power and energy, then employment and income, and then food and water. So let's start with power and energy. Cuba is experiencing widespread power outages right now, and this is happening all over the country, including in the capital. And it's linked to ongoing maintenance at a key power plant, and this is also worsened by severe fuel shortages that are happening in the country. In fact, fuel prices have now surged to more than 400%. So it's really hard to get around for these people, right? The costs are just astronomical. The country is facing its most severe economic challenge in decades. Also in power and energy, electronic waste is becoming a huge problem for people in Africa. So the whole continent is struggling with this, even though, now this is interesting, they actually generate the least amount of electronic waste. But the problem is their lack of infrastructure, and regulation for e-waste management. So what's happening is they're not disposing of things properly. In fact, they have people that are scavenging for e-waste recyclable materials because what they want to do is they want to sell it to get money because of the economy and, you know, people just need money for various things. But if they go out and do this, they're actually touching hazardous substances That can not only harm them, but it can lead to issues in the soil. It can also contaminate the water. So it's a really big deal. In China, vast amounts of land have been turned into EV graveyards. So EV meaning electric vehicle graveyards. And this is a result 
from the government's push to accelerate EV adoption. This is a common theme. We've been seeing this all over the place. They make this big push. They subsidize it. So they give out all this money for it. And there's no real need. They're pushing something that the people don't even want. And if the people were to take it one step further, they would realize this is not really helping the environment at all. And we've talked on the news before about what it does to the planet, to the earth, when they have these uh, cobalt mining facilities And how it's harming the people, it's harming the planet, it is completely destroying the land. So how is this helping us with being more sustainable? It doesn't even make sense. And I think that people are starting to catch on to this. So now we've got these graveyards of these cars that are just sitting there because the market didn't demand it. It's happening in China, and we're also getting reports that things like this are starting to happen in the United States. In Sweden, the wind power industry is also in distress with an increase in potential bankruptcies for the people that are behind the wind power and producing these wind farms. And the issue is they're not able to produce electricity at a cost lower than the market price. And that is even including all the government support and the government subsidies. Still, here's another common theme. The government is pushing forward with this. They're like, renewable, renewable, renewable. Here's the crazy thing. And a lot of you guys that watch our news already know this. It's not that I'm a big advocate of of oil, okay? (laughs) But did you know that oil is a renewable resource? Oil is actually produced by bacteria. It is the excrement, (laughs) from bacteria. So it is renewable in the fact that it keeps coming back. It's like water on our planet. We are in no danger of running out of oil. And I know they call it a fossil fuel, but that is to trick you because they think if they use the word fossil, you're going to think it's unique and, oh my gosh, it's going to go away and we have to preserve it and blah, 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 blah. That is not the truth at all. There are so many more effective ways to run things besides oil (laughs) and obviously wind farms. And I could add a lot more things to the list like those EV vehicles. But it's not what they've been telling us. okay? and the government keeps making this push for more and more of these, quote unquote, renewable energy resources. There's much better ways to do this. And in fact, in Sweden, The largest wind farm is actually facing bankruptcy. So this is what stirred up this article. Because obviously, if the big one goes down, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to the small ones, right? All right, so that's power and energy. Let's talk about employment and income now. San Francisco has launched a pilot program they're calling Family First Sacramento that will provide $725 monthly to 200 families in need. So the government is giving out free money to families in a pilot program because we know that they would love to do this nationally. And so obviously they're testing some things out in California. Now, what they claim is that they want to provide provide African-American and Native American families with children under five this income, specifically people that have been impacted by poverty and the child welfare system. And they say that families are selected through a lottery system. I just hope someone is overseeing that quote-unquote lottery system. All right, major companies in Japan have committed to a 5.28% wage increase for 2024. Now, that is the largest raise in more than three decades. And with this, they hope to rejuvenate the Japanese economy after they nearly fell into recession last year. And in Germany, Germany is actually turning to Filipino nurses to help with their health care worker shortage. So they're giving them employment. These nurses are known for their high skill level. Right now, there's about 6,000 Filipino nurses that are currently employed in Germany. That doesn't sound like a lot, right? So they plan to add a bunch more. So that 6,000 number is going to increase dramatically. However, the Filipino government is worried because they're obviously losing these highly qualified people. They're leaving their country. They're going to other countries. And so there is some concern there for the government. Now let's talk about food and water. In Bangalore, which is in India, it is a major IT hub. And this area is facing an intense water crisis. It's affecting millions of people. 
They believe it is due to an unusually hot year, and it actually got hotter earlier in the year, and it's coupled with them not having enough rainfall, which, as we know, cools things off. Half of the city's bore wells have dried up. Now, if you don't know what a bore well is, that is just a deeper well. In fact, it can be anywhere from, I looked this up (laughs) because I'm like, what's a bore well? 100 to 1,000 feet. So it can go pretty deep, right? So their bore wells are drying up, and it's actually forcing reliance on water tankers, which can be pretty expensive. Also, we've got some food issues here. In Zimbabwe, they are facing a severe food shortage crisis. It is leaving thousands of people in desperate need. This is due to droughts and also land reform policies. The country is struggling to achieve self-sufficiency when it comes to food production, and this just keeps worsening since 2000. They claim that it's partly due to white-owned farms as opposed to the people that actually live there, that are from there owning the farms. And they also say El Nino has been a factor as well. The government of Zimbabwe estimates that 2.7 million people will experience hunger in their country this year. And our final story is about Montreal and a food bank there because the demands are crazy, crazy high, and it's increasing due to Canada's rising cost of living. In the Montreal, for this particular food bank, the number of people seeking help has tripled. The queues, people are standing in line for hours. And even if you stand in line for hours, some people are getting to the front of the line and then there's no more food. So obviously a big problem, right? They say many of the people are newcomers. These are people facing language barriers and they're people also that are waiting for their work permit. So they're not even able to work yet and they need some support. All right, now we've got some highlights from the World Situation Report. Of course, that's with Kimberly Gogan from the office of The Guardian. Kim was not on the news on Monday because things got a little crazy. So we're in March now, right? Actually, more towards the end of March. You guys, you've heard of the phrase March Madness. That's a thing in the United States with our basketball teams. They call it March Madness. All right, I'm not a sports person, but I've heard of March Madness before. And I feel like the deep state has adopted this theme of March Madness right now. So we had the spring equinox, which, here's a fun fact, took place on Tuesday, March 19th. At 11.06 Eastern Time, so that is p.m., 11.06 p.m. Eastern Time. I didn't know it had an actual time to it, but it's actually the very end of the day on the 19th, at least for people in the United States. And the spring equinox means different things for different people. It's not just, oh, look at the pretty flowers and You know, beautiful life is being created on the planet. We're in a different cycle. That's not how the deep state looks at this. They look at the equinoxes as an opportunity to get their power back. Because historically, things would happen on an equinox or different alignments of different planets. And they're expecting those same things to happen now. But they haven't got the memo that we are no longer in a dark age. When you're in a dark age, source, God, the creator of the universe, allows certain things to happen that are more dark. We have recently transitioned into a light age, but the deep state does not want to believe that. They don't want to accept that. Now, before I go any further, I feel like I have to make a clarifying statement here, and I've said it before on this podcast. When I say deep state, I'm not talking about what the mainstream media says when they say deep state. They're talking about Trump. Well, actually, no, because you've got Trump with the white hats, which is a complete lie. They're talking about the Bidens. They're talking about Clinton. They're talking about the Obamas, you know, all the Senate people, the Pelosi's. That's not what I'm talking about. When Kim and I talk about the deep state, we are talking about the deep, 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 deep state that you never even knew their names. You never even knew these people existed because that's how they stay alive. The people that we know of as the deep state, because mainstream media started to talk about it, are just puppets. They are the the puppet form of the deep state, but they don't make any real decisions. So 
again, when I talk about the deep state, we're talking about people, names that you wouldn't even know, groups of people. And we usually talk about them according to their groups. So these deep state people expect bad things to happen on things like the spring equinox, which is why Kim was not on the news on Monday. So let's fast forward to Wednesday's newscast because she was on the news and she gave us an update on some things that are happening. We have talked about this a little bit before, but every 250,000 years, our planet experience something that's called a harvest event. This is not a good thing, (laughs) okay? It's not a harvest like, oh, bring in all the beautiful vegetables and fruits and all this great. No, guys, we are the harvest. Our souls are the harvest. This was a negative, a dark agenda, And this was to collect our essence, collect our souls, and these events would happen so they could do this. They would literally wipe out the planet. Most of you guys know the story of the Great Flood. That was not a complete wipeout of the planet. That was kind of like a little mini harvest because that did not happen 250,000 years ago. But they do these little collections, and we are part of the collection, And if we were still in a dark age, right now would be their scheduled harvest event. So this is the quote unquote end times because they believe they were going to do this huge harvest event. And if any of you have read the book of Revelation, you know all the horrible things that were supposed to happen. But the creator of the universe had other plans. So he basically, and he's obviously not a he, but I'm just going to use that pronoun. He stopped it from happening. And he transitioned us, which is a decision only source can make, only God or the creator of the universe can make. So we are now in a light age. So these horrible things that were supposed to happen are no longer going to happen. And Kim, along with her team, have been doing various things to make sure that doesn't happen. And there are other beings that are helping us with this as well. We have 120,000 angels or legion of angels here on this planet that are helping us in various ways. This is a very, very, very big deal. So right now, again, if this were a dark age, we would be having this harvest event, which is what the deep state still wants to have happen. But they're just not wanting to understand or believe that we are now in a light age. So I'm going to play this clip that Kimberly shares with us, um, again, from Wednesday's news, about these, I guess there were 11 events that were planned as part of like a a pre-harvest event. So they basically, and when I say they, this is not the deep state. These are other beings, demons, things like that, that have dark essence. So they cannot connect with the creator. The creator is of light essence, so that's not going to work for them. So what they have to do is take light essence, which comes from us humans. They have to take that light essence. They have to transmute it to be able to use it for the dark. And they do this through these harvest events. So let's talk about these last two events of these 11 events that Kim had been working on over the weekend and into Monday, which is, again, why she wasn't on the news. We don't go through all 11 I think we might be really depressed if we heard about all 11 events, but we're going to talk about the last two. So it came to our attention uh, about Friday afternoon, uh, Saturday morning, that of the 11 harvest events that were due to take place, we had successfully removed nine. And there were still two hanging out there. And then there are additional events that would have happened after the harvest. So by harvest events with the 11, these are the things that would have wiped out basically all living things on this planet. And after the death of everyone within three days, then there were four subsequent events that would have taken place and then an additional three. Sometimes I wish I would know things ahead of time so we could just get rid of it then and prevent this untenuous situation. Mm -hmm. But I don't get the information until right about the time things are supposed to heat up or get started. And maybe that's so we don't have they don't have enough time to try to recover something Mm -hmm. of the two remaining events of the portion of the harvest that is meant to wipe out all life on this planet. Uh, one of them was to cover the planet in something I call red dust. 
Uh, in our science world, they call it red mercury. Uh, it's not exactly red mercury, uh, but it's something similar. It's a compilation of metals that eventually make people go crazy. So part of the reason why they were talking about everybody going crazy during the eclipse is because it, that would have been the time for this event to take place. How this is created is there was something dormant, which is sometimes when you something is dormant, you can't see it, and it's in the Omegaverse. Mm -hmm. And what was dormant was this, I guess you would call them, pockets of this red dust that would have come up through to Earth, through the center of Earth, so Earth's central vortex, and they would have come up through several places on Earth as it would have created a subsequent vortex in all of these locations. I almost felt like when I was looking at all of the events that were due to take place, like, you know, you ever go to an automated car wash and it's like first the soap comes down and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, does all the thing. And then, you know, you have the, the sheet water. that goes back and forth and yeah. then you have the dryer that comes on. And, and this was almost like an automated process just like that. That's why it came to my mind. It was like one thing after another. And as you drive through it or as we go through these times and and there was nothing humans on this planet were going to do, meaning the elites. Okay. There was nothing they were going to do to start it or stop it. Mm -hmm. But I will give you the locations uh, where these special places are. Now, some of these places on Earth are places that humans often go to because they know there's a vortex there and they think that it's special and it does have a different type of feeling when you're there. Uh, but I can tell you right now, they're special, all right, um, but not the kind of special you think they are. And a lot of the spiritual places on Earth have the same issue. You know, they're known as special spiritual places, but they're really not to our benefit. And it's kind of a way of tricking humans into bringing about events or opening vortexes, and they try to use your energy to make these things happen. So places, um, it's called the Anedi, um, E-N-N-E-D-I, Plateau in Chad. Uh, and you'll notice when you look at all these places, if you choose to look them up and do your own research, all of them have red rocks. Mm -hmm. And although the material in those rocks that makes them red isn't what they say it is, it actually um, are remnants from the last time that this happened. So then we have the red rocks of... Bayan Zag and the Gobi Desert. It's B-A-Y-A-N-Z-A-G. Uh, Red Rock State Park in Sedona, Arizona, in the U.S. Red Rock Canyon in Utah. The Valley of Fire in Nevada. The Red Sand Desert in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Grand Canyon, United States. Uluru, Australia. Dunes of Namib, N-A-M-I-B, Desert in Namibia, Africa. Uh, Eastern Desert of Badia in Jordan. It kind of goes through Jordan, Syria, and Iraq, uh, touches all those places. Uh, the Red Land of the Camares, C-A-M-A-R-E-S, in France. The Red Rocks near St. Abbs in Scotland. Lake Lumeria, that's a surprise right there, in Ukraine, it's actually pink. Uh, the Atacama Desert Plateau in Chile, spelled A-T-A-C-A-M-A. -A -A. Mount Sinai, in a mountain in Egypt. Uh, the Sleeping Sands of the Kalahari Desert in South Africa. And the Valley of the Moon in Argentina. So 18 locations would have been, that's where it would have started and it would have sprouted out of that vortex like a geyser, almost a reverse vortex. So when you think of a vortex, you think of it kind of sucking everything into mm -hmm. the vortex, but this would have been the opposite and it would have been pushing everything out of the vortex mm -hmm. to eventually cover all of planet Earth. So if we hadn't died of the other 10 events of the harvest, then this would have surely gotten all the rest of us. That was the plan. 
Have we talked, Kim, about what the other events are, or do you not want to do that because it's too depressing? I just think people, it's kind of interesting what the overall plan was here. Well, I'll talk about one more of them because that was the one that we actually found that was, I would say, functioning at a capacity of somewhere between 5 to 10 percent. So it wasn't fully functioning, but I, I, I kind of like to call it the Murphy Law situation. <laughs> so it began actually, and, and um, we couldn't really figure out where the frequency was coming from because it was pretty low, like it wasn't real high. It was, you know, just kind of like an underlying current. But it started with a trickle around the 2nd of November. And by trickle, I mean, it's almost like if you put a, you know, if you're cooking lab, or, uh, sorry, lobster or crab, I want to mix those two together, lobster <laughs> or crab, you can put them in the water, you know, if they're alive when the, um, with no heat, you know, with cold water and then slowly turn up the heat. And supposedly that's the better way to cook them. I don't know. I don't eat any of that. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's like a slow boil right. on the planet. And you probably noticed by, you know, within a couple of weeks of that, you know, you go through these bouts of weird energy, uh, tiredness, uncomfortableness, uh, Murphy's Law, if it could go wrong, it did go wrong. Uh, arguments between people, uh, even as, especially over the last two to three weeks, people start acting real erratically. Uh, they're, they're out of character. Uh, things... Um, their reaction to things is different. And, you know, our, our sensitive people, us more spiritual people, are feeling like you go through rounds of, you know, everything is great. And then all of a sudden, you know, you feel a little dizzy. You feel like you're under an energy attack. If you are aware of those things, uh, okay. you feel that um, it would be better not to go to sleep because sleep was worse than the waking time. And it just kept increasing and increasing, increasing until it started really getting pretty hot and heavy a few days ago over the weekend because we were approaching the equinox when most of the harvest events would have gone off. Now, this is why the deep part of the reason why the deep state or remaining deep state was all happy with themselves. And, you know, you saw reports of three days of darkness and all of this crazy stuff, and we're all going to die. And if we don't die now, we're going to die by the equinox and stock up on supplies. Well, I can tell you if this actually had gone off, uh, there was no amount of stocking up on anything that was going to help you. Yeah, it sounds like it. Like, get goods. Get goods for what? <laughs> So I don't right know, the fi your the final church. dinner, or what's that when they're going to execute yeah. somebody? What are they call last, meal, last meal, final meal, whatever, yeah. Yeah, because you wouldn't have needed to stock up for months because it would have been over. And, yeah. and do you think the deep state realized that they would be going down with the ship too? Or was there yeah. a plan to get them off planet? Sonny, there you go with common sense again. So please <laughs> don't enter common sense into that. <laughs> right, exactly. I want to finish the harvest thing, and then I'll tell you what they thought. Okay. And how bad it was. I mean, I was laughing hysterically yesterday. I had to laugh. You know, it's either laugh or cry. So I put a lot of hours in over the weekend based on different other things that would have taken place. So that pretty much uh, the last two that I mentioned were the last two that we had not gotten that we had cleared out over the weekend. Okay. And the other ones we had pretty much dismantled just in the course of the cleanup operations unknowingly that they were harvest events or they were part of the program. Okay, so those were the last two events that were supposed to happen pre-harvest. And then Kim goes on to explain, then you have the actual harvest. Now, that needs to be done within three days of these 11 events because, and I didn't realize this, but Kim explains it on the news, is that your soul, your essence, your consciousness typically stays with your body for three days after you pass, okay, after the body dies, your essence and your consciousness, your soul, which makes you you, that typically stays with the body. So if you're going to have a harvest to collect all of this so you can send it to the lower astral, 
because they can't create on their own. They can't create alongside source or the creator of the universe. They have to transmute the light so that they can do all the nefarious stuff that they do. Well, if you're going to get all that good stuff, you have to get it within three days. So then you have this actual harvest to re-energize the lower astral. Now, when I say the lower astral, I am talking about the lower densities. Sometimes people refer to it as hell. Not entirely accurate, but let's just roll with it, okay? A very dark place where dark beings go. Then, after you have the harvest, you have post-harvest events. And this is the next clip that I want to play because it brings in another character from the Bible that you guys have heard of, Cain. Remember, Cain killed his brother Abel. Well, there was something submitted on Cain's behalf to the Hall of Records called Cain's Revenge, and it was supposed to wrap up this whole harvest process. Here's Kim with more. An agreement popped into the Hall of Records unratified, but that did not come from a human. We still have stupid humans uh, trying to register things, and we'll talk about that too. Uh, But uh, the agreement that popped in was actually an automated agreement that was an agreement between Cain. Uh, We've talked about Cain before. For those of you that read the Bible, you know Cain killed his brother, cursed by God, forced to roam the planet Earth for an extended period of time before he could actually return back to the lower astral where he came from. He was one of the original lower astral beings. And so this agreement that came through in an automated way Uh, from a pocket of time in the ninth density of the lower astral was called Cain's Revenge. Couldn't figure out where it came from. I'm like, Cain's Revenge. That's interesting. (laughs) So (laughs) apparently there had been a lot of agreements between Cain, a lower astral being, one of the original uh, humans, anti-human version Mm -hmm. 1.0, just like the Abraxas were. And Cain's uh, revenge was all about the Omegaverse taking over all of Source and all of the um, all of the Omega uh, Alphaverse where we live. Mm-hmm. So it was basically the reverse of what Source said several months ago when he said we're going to go down there and we're going to turn out the lights. Yeah. This was the opposite of that plan. Is it was going to come up here and turn out the lights, Mm -hmm. basically turning all beings into Omegaverse beings and eventually the Alphaverse converting all the way back to an Omegaverse. So these were the plans uh, in the last three events. Uh, The first one would have been to install anti-crystalline time, so forever dark time uh, throughout the multiverse. Kind of sounds like what we were doing in the reverse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the full takeover of the null zone verse, uh, uh, the spaces in between, the neutral, neither source nor anti-source. This would have been neutral. Uh, and then the reinstallation of all of their hardware, uh, time machines, and all of in ways of creation, transmuting all that energy that it just took to the lower astral. Mm. So this was the final phase of the harvest. Uh, that was due to take place. And this would have been after the eclipse. That was the plan. You know, it would have taken a lot a lot of time. It took us a lot of time to get in the other direction. I mean, it's taken, what, a year or two to get in the other direction, yeah. you know, event after event after event. So it would have taken it some time to actually do that too. Now, that no longer is a possibility, but there's a whole mechanism that was behind all of this that we had to find because it wasn't active. It was an inactive pocket of time that hadn't actually fully been created until the last few days. Mm. So let's talk about the deep state's perception and what they did. So the order of the black sun being descendants of Cain, these are Cain splices. Uh, Cain actually had served as the parent over the order of the black sun for a long time. Uh, till a few thousand years ago, about a thousand, fifteen hundred years ago. As a parent on this planet. So one of the, when we talk yep. about the parents, Cain was one of those. Yep. Oh. For, for a while. Yeah. Under the nickname of the Dark Prince. Oh, good to know. Mm-hmm. And then 
you know, eventually it was passed down to other parents, you know, that served for the last thousand, fifteen hundred years, something like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the Black Sun's perspective on things was they were now going to be in charge and powerful. Now, this information, again, is knowledge based on an unchanging state of the multiverse. They were apparently given information at some point in time that this was going to happen. It would be for their benefit as the bloodline of Cain, and they were going to be put in charge of this planet. Now, I'm going to tell you from the events that I saw that were about to take place, not including the ones that had already been dismantled, that couldn't be further from the truth. I know. Yeah. They could give, and I and I have to say this in the nicest way I can, not just for you, but also for them. For the love of God, people, if you are listening to this and you believe that you're with the bloodline of Cain and you are part of the Order of the Black Sun in any capacity anywhere, and anywhere in the downline of the Order of the Black Sun, no alien race, lower astral or otherwise, could give a rat's beep about you. Yeah. They do not want to help you. They do not want to give you power. They do not want to give you control. They wanted you to work like their slaves to corral the cattle, being the rest of us. And then That's all they that. wanted you to do till they don't need you anymore. And they would have wiped you out, too. Yep. I mean, it makes sense to us. But sometimes people with really big egos or maybe they're just I mean, if you really are the bloodline of Cain, who was one of the original beings in the lower astral, an anti-human, as Kim calls him, maybe this common sense just doesn't work for you. But they apparently thought that they were special. And the nemesis, I guess you could say, of the Black Sun is the Order of the Dragon, right? These are two groups of humans that have kind of been vying for power here on this planet. So what the Black Sun was able to do is convince the Order of the Dragon that, listen, guys, you guys lost, but if you turn over all of your assets to us, meaning any codes or any access you think you have to the financial system, well, we may let you live because now it's our time to shine on this planet. You know, you don't really have any say, but hey, if you make this transition a little bit easier for us, then maybe we'll let you live. So that's basically the update on Wednesday's World Situation Report. On Friday, okay, Kim reminded us, we have the lunar eclipse that is taking place this Sunday night. I'm recording this on Saturday, the 23rd. So here in the U.S., it'll take place on the 24th, March 24th. And right now, all the elites are fighting. They're fighting, fighting, fighting because Obviously, what they want to have happen is not happening, right? We don't have this red stuff coming up out of our planet. We don't have these vortexes that are stealing our energy. And they're frustrated because they weren't the ones to hit the button, right? They just read these books of knowledge, which is outdated information because it's not coming from the creator. It's just information that's been passed down for thousands and thousands of years. And it's inaccurate because Source made the change into a light age. So the stuff that they want to happen happen is not happening. They're freaking out. They've got zero conclusions on what to actually do. In the past, they would just try to make humanity uh, as miserable as possible. So they have this bright idea of possibly starting uh, a war in Taiwan. As you know, that's been in the news lately. Uh, Kim actually heard them saying, going back and forth on the different channels, that the Ukraine stuff isn't working out. It's not enough to start World War III, so we need to get another war in there. We need a lot of people to die, and then maybe our demon friends will come back. And so the war, if there is a war in Taiwan, but this whole talk of war in Taiwan is not about... Taiwan. There's really nothing in Taiwan that anyone wants. What they want are the optics. They want the U.S. to be dragged into a war with China, two major superpowers. And as opposed to having a cold war like we, what the United States had with Russia, this would be a hot war. That's what they want to have happen. And they believe that after this lunar eclipse that's taking place on Sunday, that they're going to get this funding. 
because this lunar eclipse is going to suddenly magically open up all this money for them and give them access to the financial system and everything is going to be right with the world in their eyes. But what they don't understand is they are no longer the guardians or the gatekeepers of this planet. So this is going to lead us into the next soundbite. This is really exciting, guys. We've got a lot of uh, religious text that is better explained this week in our situation report. So this is really exciting for me. If you don't already know, planet Earth is a gateway planet, which means this planet had access to the upper astral and the lower astral. And... Most planets don't have this. This is very unique to planet Earth, which is why our planet has been this huge battleground between light and dark, because you can go up and you can go down. So if you're in the lower astral and you're trying to reach heaven, so to speak, and take over God, (laughs) which is what we've been told about in religious texts is supposed to happen, right? That's the whole plan. Well, then you need to have access to these, these different... Uh, areas, these different gateways. And so you need to be on planet Earth. And these humans would be in charge. They'd have limited control, but they would have some control over these gates when they were in a dark age. Okay. Now, this leads us to talk about the Ark of the Covenant, which is something else from religious texts, but we have not heard the whole story or even really part of the story. We've we've had very limited knowledge on the Ark of the Covenant, except hearing now and again that, oh, there's an Ark here, and this Ark was buried there and stolen from this place. Well, one of the reasons you hear about the Ark being in various places is because there's actually nine Arks of the Covenant. And Kim explains this a little bit more. There are two major Arks and seven minor Arks. And these arcs are directly related to controlling these gateways to go up to the upper astral and the lower astral. But here's the thing. Because we are now in a light age, forevermore in a light age, so we're never going back to dark ages again, Source, the creator of the universe, has determined that we do not need these gatekeepers anymore. What, what's, to, what's to guard There's nothing in the lower astral anymore. So you don't have to make sure there's a certain amount of light. There's a certain amount of dark. You don't have to worry about that anymore. So you don't need these arcs of the covenant to do what they were originally intended to do. So let's get more into that. Let's talk about what the arcs were and how they control these gates. So today, uh, there is a World Bank also in London, although the headquarters is in the United States, as you know. And underneath that World Bank, they had stolen many, many years ago a, a, an Ark of the Covenant. Now, for those of you that have been following for a while, this might be repetitive, but there are seven minor Arcs of the Covenant on the planet. There is not just the one. Now, there are two major Arcs of the Covenant on the planet as well, that were not accessible by the gatekeepers. What makes it, Kim, a major versus a minor? Okay, I'll explain that to you. So let's go back to stories we know, so then I can tell you how this ties into why they're confused and what they're still trying to do. Okay, Okay, so the two major arcs contain, one is for source and one is for anti-source. They essentially uh, contain the essence of the full essence of one or the other. Now, in a dark age, they both would be dark. Mm. In a light age, they both would be light. And this was part of the Ark of the Covenant, which necessarily doesn't have anything to do with a human being. Mm -hmm. It has to do with gateway control. And then there were seven miners, which were accessible to some degree, by the gatekeepers. In a dark age, and per subsequent agreements with the Order of the Black Sun and the Line of Solomon, known as the Order of the Dragon, and still the Order of the Black Sun, respectively, they were able to utilize the power of the arcs 
to control the gates. It was gateway control, at least so they thought. So they would take these arcs and move them to specific locations to where they would have more access to, for example, the financial system, hence the one that they took and stole out of India, out of Tibet, uh, and moved it, which, okay, debatable, China, Tibet, India, Tibet, big, right. you know, it's been going on for ages, um, and, and then move it to underneath the World Bank in London to create themselves a gateway so that they could possibly access the highest levels of things from the World Bank. No shock there. Now, all nine of these were dark for a very long period of time. So the Ark of the Covenant that we read about, for example, in the Bible, yes. at that time, it was a dark covenant? It was a dark Ark? It became dark, yes. Okay. Um, remember, the 12 tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. you know, were of source. Right. It just depended on which side of source. Uh, Solomon went dark. And then, therefore, everybody else went dark. And to be fair, it was a dark age. Uh, yeah. But Earth could have gone. He could have come and created balance. He did not. That's not what they chose. Right. So the Ark being in Israel and then moving eventually to Japan, this particular one mm -hmm. that we're referring to is no surprise here. You know, uh, moving it to Japan and Mount Fiji was no surprise. It was one of the darkest portals on Earth. So a minor Ark has like part of the essence. I'm still trying to figure out the difference between a major and a minor. So what would a minor would be able to do less, obviously, than a major Ark? Right, and and due to the uh, the Emerald Covenant, where we had colors, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically a separation um, of color itself, of white or black, or the combination of the two, is how we create colors through prisms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and the seven miners during the Dark Ages would have had different color essence, energy, consciousness, matter. So it was a piece of source, not all of source or anti-source. Okay. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. So having the seven miners in different locations where they do not belong and the two majors, having them be dark was... I guess you would say how they controlled the gateways. They used these as part of the Ark of the Covenant as appointed with by secondary covenants of source or anti-source is what made them gatekeepers. That's what made them the line of Solomon so important in part, and that's what made the gatekeepers so important in part. Now, not that long ago, within the last couple of years, those arcs all started to turn as we've been talking about returning to the age of light, returning the planet to source. Uh, those arcs have all turned to light now. Okay. It's just that in order to stand in the present of the arc and open the arc, now there's a difference between standing in the room with something um, and standing in the room when the ark is open, mm. uh, that is something completely different. Okay. So if in the presence of an anti-source full arc, so the, dark, the uh, level nine, for lack of a better term, the highest level of source or anti-source, you would either have to be from that density or have that much purity in you in order to survive standing in front of an open arc. Mm. Now, on the flip side of it, and you know the stories, you heard the stories yeah. about people turning to dust and the, all that's very true. Because remember, the main location for the gatekeeper program was based in Israel. <laughs> it's interesting when these stories start to come together and you're like, that's why that makes they sense. They do. We didn't have, you know, it wasn't so relevant to computer systems as it was to the gates and earth. Uh, prior to, you know, we we're talking thousands of years ago when these stories were written, right, allegedly. Right. Right. Uh, it was more relevant to computers after 1948 with the installation under Tel Aviv. But that's why it was originally located there. Okay. Main gateway 
main dark gateway for all of planet Earth in Israel. Right. No surprise there. Now, to stand in the presence of, you know what it's like when you're standing in the grocery store and you're standing around a very negative person. <laughs> and then if you get around a person that's so negative, they're like a black, they do black magic or they're, you know, clearly messing with some evil stuff. I mean, it almost is like two magnets repelling each other. Yeah. Like you're feeling a push, you're feeling an energy push when you're around that pers person and they are the exact opposite, you know, of you. So take that negative experience you're having at the grocery store or with a person who's just got a negative attitude and and amplify it times a thousand and then take it to a whole nother level when you're standing in front of one of these arcs. Okay. Now, we know uh, that. I signed my agreement to become the guardian after the other agreement expired back in 2018. Mm -hmm. So that kind of eliminated their ability for the guardianship of Earth. But I also am the gatekeeper. So that's been for now, what, four or five, six years. So I, the arcs turning light was an indication of the turning back over of the planet to source. Therefore, this gentleman was surprised this morning when he walked underneath the World Bank and it was no longer dark. <laughs> because Wait, which you gentlemen are we talking about now? You know, um I won't I won't say much about him because he's not a bad person, this person. Okay. Uh, he was cannon fodder. Because none of the elites or the alleged people that call themselves the gatekeepers wanted to dare step in front of it. So they gave the guy what he needed to open it. Okay. Uh, they thought uh, and told him to open it. They would like to open the gates. And the guy called them up and explained to them that this is not a dark gateway. This is a light gateway. There is light here. This is golden. It's light. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, do you still want me to open the light gate? <laughs> um, you know, and he was pretty nervous, to be fair. I bet, yeah. Uh, because he knows the ramifications. If It's basically a suicide mission. You could yeah. call him, you know, he was not going to come back from that. So I, apparently he got off scot-free uh, because the covenant is no longer needed because we don't have, okay, let me kind of explain. So the actual arc of the covenant, the covenant itself mm -hmm. had to do with gateway control on earth made at the from the beginning of time itself, you know, meaning the beginning of the creation of anti-source itself. Okay. Between source and source. Right. And neutral source, for that matter, eventually, was, was the separation between the two um, uh, universes. So the turning back of these to light and then the eventual switching off of the arcs, which also happened earlier today, was indicative of the fact there is no longer a need for a gatekeeper, in, essentially because we don't have anywhere to go down anymore. Yeah. Therefore, there is only one way. So trying to control how many dark come, how much darkness comes in, how much light comes in, you know, to the planet is no longer a yeah. thing and it's no longer an issue. There's mm -hmm. only one way now, there's only one light, there's only mm -hmm. one source. And as far as getting us to this point, that was the job, remember the, giver of life declaration and the restoration of not only earth, but the multiverse in his likeness. Right. So once that process is 100% complete, then, then there, there is no need for these anymore. Hence, in my opinion, part of the reason why this agreement expired earlier today, like very early in the morning U S time. So by source itself, did you have a heads up that it was going to expire or did it just kind of happen? Not a clue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Just another day at UNN. You know, the Ark of the Covenant expired. You know, no big deal. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> if you're curious what happened to our little cannon fodder friend, 
He's okay. He's still alive. As you may recall, they wanted him to open the ark, but by the time he did, well, it was turned off, or else he would probably be a pile of sand (laughs) or something like that, right? So there you go. Talk about real history coming to life, and it's happening right now. So what do you do with this information, guys? It's a lot to take in. I told you, you're going to hear stuff here on UNN you have never heard anywhere else. And it's crazy because it's all real and it's happening right now. So I encourage you guys to do your research. Kim earlier mentioned specific places when she was talking about all that red rock. Take a look at that. Look at these different places. Is there red rock in all those places? Can you imagine the stuff coming up out of the earth? That was the plan. And I encourage you as always, keep asking questions. Think critically. And if you enjoy today's episode, please share it with the people you care about. For more information, you can go to unitednetwork.earth. Please subscribe if you can, become a member. That's going to give you on-demand access to all of our UNN newscasts, complete world situation reports, as well as some of our original series. And you'll also get a chance to chat with us. We have a section on the app called United Chat. That is our online community. But you can also comment under the videos. So when we release a newscast, a lot of people just comment under the video and both myself and Kim hop on there and try to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. You can also follow us on social media because we have an incredible social media team that creates clips from each newscast. So you can easily share some of these sound bites that we've been talking about and sharing with you today. You can share that with other people that you care about or people you don't care about that are just on social media and you want to tick them off. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) We want to do all of this with love, you guys. But it is important to get the information out there. So if you're already on social media, please join us. And the links to all of our social media profiles are on unitednetwork.earth in the bottom navigation. So just scroll to the bottom and you'll see all of it. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you guys. This is The Rundown, and I'm Sunny Galt for United Network News, signing off.